Well, I told y'all that the Real Housewives of Atlanta season 13 trailer was going to be a snooze fest. <laughs> y'all already know what time it is. I got the black bean neck on. What is going on? It feels like it's a Friday. Happy Thursday. I don't know if it's the power of the vaccine, but I got my second shot yesterday. I don't have any side effects. I feel really, really good. My energy is through the roof. Girl, I'll probably say that it'd be like this tomorrow. Yeah, blah. But I hope y'all are hoping. <laughs> girl, what? But I hope y'all are enjoying y'all Thursday afternoon, girl. I'm recording this King of Reads video. The sun is coming down. I'm about to go get some ice cream in a minute because it's been a long week and I need a treat. Period. If it's been a long week, do you need a treat? I don't know if what. I said a treat. Some of y'all gonna go get a treat. I just know some of y'all gonna go get a treat. Especially my good sis, <laughs> Tyrone. I know you gonna get a treat. Tyrone be taking about two trees a day. <laughs> I wish I could get a treat. But we are going to be respectful because, girl, that's why the girls don't be wanting to fool with me because I'm so unprofessional, girl. Uh, girl, I got a dragon email from my uh, from my folks the other day. It's like, girl, you need to delete that. You need to delete that. You need to delete that. Because I don't want to get in no trouble. I ain't got no money for nobody to be suing me. I already got the RS knocking on my door door, okay? But what is going on, y'all? We got a lot of things to talk about. Not really, but some things. We got to get into this Real Housewives of Atlanta season 13 trailer that was giving me a snooze fast. We got to talk about what's going on with Lil Nas X and his um, his song, um, Montero, Call Me By Your Name. It has been disappearing from platforms and stuff. Um, I was able to play it on my Apple TV on my TV, but I was able to listen to it on my phone because I downloaded it. So I don't know what's going on. Folks in other countries haven't been able to, so that's the whole thing. Then we had to talk about this Kim Potter situation, what's going on up north. Um, girl, it's a lot. Like, so I'm just gonna, I'm giving y'all high energy because I'm gonna be talking about a lot of things that's been going on. We got army sergeants out here disrespecting black folks. And let me tell you something. It made me angry and I was ready to wah, wah, real quick. Cause baby, it took me back to my basic training day. So we got a lot of stuff to talk about. So girl, I'm going ahead and give you a trigger warning. We're going to be dragging, we're going to be dragging the walkers today. We're going to be dragging the, the walkers today. So get prepared, girl, before we get into any of that. Y'all know what time it is. We got to get into this mental health check-in. So what's going on? My mental is doing great. Although, I'm going to be honest, this is like full transparency. Baby, Justin is finally caught up with his taxes. Girl, let me go ahead and full, pay your taxes. Pay your taxes, file your taxes. Dude, girl, since I've been in Atlanta, I ain't <laughs> filed no taxes. Girl, let me tell you something. If I'm struggling to pay rent and I'm barely getting corn, I ain't filed no taxes, girl. I ain't. Girl, so I can pay y'all? No, ma'am. So I finally got that together. Um, and girl, woo, when I tell y'all, y'all don't want to know the number that Uncle Sam gave me. Girl, I was devastated. So shout out to my... Good, 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 good sis, George M. Johnson said. Girl, you need to put some coins to the side, because when you work for yourself and you're doing all these things, it is easy to get caught up. Uh, but thankfully, I don't owe the Uncle Sam no millions of dollars. I ain't in no Lauryn Hill situation, but I, I love Lauryn Hill and other artists and stuff. But I got my stuff together, thankful for that, and you know, it's just, girl, whew, it's a lot going on this week, but I'm in better space. Everything is seeming to come together. I gotta go to the bank and take care of some stuff tomorrow, but I will be doing that. But other than that, um, I'm doing really good. I'm feeling really good today. I hope y'all are. I know some of y'all messaged me on Patreon. It was like, Justin, you helped me out today. I wasn't, you know, feeling it. So I appreciate y'all. I love being on Patreon. Just dropped a video on Patreon talking about why do I ride so hard for black women. Um, shout out to Sydney who put that together and said, girl, like, I want to talk about this. And a lot of people voted for it. A lot of the Kings God said, yes, ma'am. That's what I want to hear about. So that video is on Patreon. I also got some other video that's coming out on Patreon. I think I'm going to do a drag race review on the final four. Put that on Patreon. I got a little bit of surprise for y'all. A little bit. It might not be a surprise. I'm doing something. I'll let y'all let me know about that this next week. It's not as big as the Lenox X interview, but we don't know. It could be. I'm doing something special. But, um... You know, good. So, uh, with all that being said, let's go ahead and get to the tea for today. The tea for today is let's go and get into it. Let's go and go and get into it. Real Housewives of Atlanta season 13 reunion trailer was a snooze fest. Bravo, dear Bravo. I'm talking to y'all directly. Pull the camera up, girl. Bravo. I watched this trailer and y'all had this. Y'all had what's the name as the narrator? 
Drew and her prayer stuff, and it just was not working. Y'all tried to do this black southern thing, this comedy in the, in, the, in the trailer, and it just didn't work. It just didn't work. It's too many problems, too many white hands in the back working. It just didn't work, and it just wasn't strong. I just, and I, maybe I'm biased because I don't want to hear none of that mess. Like, I'd rather to hear um, Andy do the narration, talk about what's going on, and da da da. Like, I'd rather for that to happen, but, and add some snippets and stuff. But I feel like I told y'all that this trailer was going to be boring. I said the reunion was going to be boring. And a lot of things, I got a lot of things to like show me that it was. We've got no sneak peeks. We've got no no leaks, no nothing. Normally, be Scott been to have something. Normally, um, the other Tamara Tattles been to have something. Normally, some tea comes out about the reunion. When I tell you, there was nothing. Because there was nothing to talk about. It's nothing but Portia and the Bolo situation. Now, Portia has gotten on Instagram and she said that she will be addressing something on Instagram Live. But I was trying to wait for her to go live. And I was like, girl, I got things to do. I'll probably talk about it later. But that's it. Like, it's nothing else. Like, this, the season just wasn't giving. Um, it just wasn't. It was just boring. It seemed like Marlo um, was kind of carrying the trailer a little bit. And I'm just like, I want Marlo to talk but not talk too much because I don't want to hear her. I don't want to see everybody ganging up on everybody. I just want to see the conversation. Why was this so serious? Andy asking the question. But I'm not interested in Marlo going off on Portia. Portia going off on Marlo. Marlo trying to stir some mess up to get Candy back mad at Portia. I feel like Candy and Portia are in a good place. They had a misunderstanding, some things, some serious things. They came together. They worked it out. But for Marlo to try to bring that back up, it's just not. Because you know Candy is one of the folks she cannot let shit go. She would care this shit for 30 years. And I want to talk because I'd be the same way. But not really. Not really, not really. Like, girl, I be letting stuff go. So, girl, shout out to my girl, Jessie Food. She went to uh, Blaze Seafood and Kitchen or whatever, Blaze Seafood and Steak. I actually saw the food that she posted on Instagram. I trust, I trust Jessie Food. She said the food was good. I'm going to have to check it out because I love me some good macaroni and cheese. But I feel like everybody be throwing macaroni and cheese in. And then they probably, Jessie I'm going to have to text her and see what the tea is. But, yes, um, Real Housewives Atlanta, um, the season finale will be this Sunday. Um, next Sunday will be the reunion. Um, I will be doing it live on Patreon for everybody who's asking. You do not have to have a select tier to access it. Everybody who has been supporting me on Patreon will get a link the day before um, the reunion. So be prepared for that. If you're not on Patreon, I don't know what you... If you're not joining Patreon, you're only getting half the conversation. Come on, Drag Race. Um, but yes, let's get into some other things. So I talked about that. Um, really don't care about the bo bo Bolo storyline. It's, it's, it's tiring. It's tiring. Um, let's talk about this um, Patrice Culler situation. I hope I'm pronouncing her name right. There's been a lot of conversation. I talked about it a little bit in my video yesterday. So somebody sent me an Instagram video. Uh, this person, I think their name is Sonia, and they were just talking about, you know, how like Massage Noir has a part to play in the criticism of Patrice Colliers and how Colliers, or what I can't pronounce her name, I really can't pronounce that, but, but Patrice, Patrice, the um, you know, one the co-founder of Black Lives Matter um, and the Black Lives Matter Global Network. Um, there's been a big conversation about how much money they raised last year doing all of the things that was going on. And now you got folks like Patrice who, you know, sis has bought this million dollar home here, this home here, and has also called herself a uh, Marxist. Um, and now it's just like, you've made all this money, where's this money going? Where is this, like, what's going on? And some folks are saying, well, Patrice has a book deal, she has a, like these things, and she was doing this and that, and she got a, she signed a little thing with Warner Brothers and all these things, so I don't know what the issue is. Like, black women can't make their own money. I think that I can, I, I'm not going to say that, 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 that it's not any. I think definitely when conservatives, especially conservatives, drag, they don't care about this. They don't care about, you know, that where their money's going. They just want to drag her. But you are not going to gaslight us and make it seem as though we are out here being mad at a black woman for making money. When the conversation is, Patrice would not be in that situation had it not Black Lives Matter was founded in response to all the police injustices that were going on. That was in response to that. So you cannot, like Patrice built a brand off of that. She made money off of it. She's that, That's what it is. That's just what it is. Yes, Patrice shouldn't be dog poor. She shouldn't be out here not like getting getting some coin and stuff like if she writing a book and doing all these things but what does it say when somebody's out here buying million dollar homes and then the parents of these folks of these folks who have lost their sons their daughters are coming out 
Uh, and calling Patrice and other folks out and said, y'all are not for us. Y'all are out here not working to end these things that y'all said y'all were. Y'all out here making money. Like, there is literally, matter of fact, I'm finna pull it up. Where is my phone at? There's literally a statement from some of these mothers. Uh, from Samir Rice, the mother of Tamir Rice, Lisa Simpson, mother of Richard Risher, and the collective. They're basically saying that they're skeptical about everything that's going on. These are the folks who have lost their children to these things. So if you got the mothers out here saying, hey girl, like, I don't know what's going on, but you know, y'all out here living lavish and I lost my child and I'm not out here, you know, dealing with that. And like, I, I, these folks might be focused on just not even money or just getting money back, but getting justice and stopping this stuff from happening to anybody else in the future. So that's like, what is going on? Like, it, like it's just, I'm going to be honest, like, it looks very suspect. Nobody's saying Patrice got to be dirt poor and all those things. But sis, a million, two, three million dollar homes, like, no ma'am, absolutely not. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. That's a no-go. Like, and I know some folks who got some million dollar homes. I, 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 I know some folks got some million dollar homes. And I'll be telling them this, like the same thing if they built their brand and their things off of these things. Like, and some folks were comparing uh, Patrice to the treatment of, um, I can't think of her name, Stacey Abrams. Stacey Abrams allegedly bought a million dollar home. Stacey Abrams has never came out and said she was Marxist. Stacey Abrams hasn't built her, her, her a brand off of these things. And her, the no mothers are sitting up here calling her out. These mothers were calling out Tamika Mallory. They was calling out Sean King. They was calling out, like, but you cannot argue that about Patrice when folks have been dragging Sean King since the beginning of time about these things. Folks have been dragging Sean King for the longest about these things. And these are the things that I'm, 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 I'm telling myself and talking to myself about because I don't want to be out here making money off of these things. And I, I'm not no organizer. I'm not no activist. I'm not out here doing all these things and then signing million dollar book deals. And I'm not doing that. What I'm doing is amplifying the voices of these folks who are out here talking about this stuff, bringing awareness to this and that, and, talk, and just having a conversation and educating folks on my journey to a better person. Like, that's what I'm doing. But when you got folks out here like, girl, Y'all out here doing these things like that is the conversation about the the um, nonprofit industrial complex where folks are making the nonprofit is not doing anything other than making money. And I can tell you as somebody who's been researching and doing a little stuff about nonprofits, that's how a lot of these folks operate. And I'm not saying that Black Lives Matter is doing that. I'm not saying Patrice, but I'm just saying there are a lot of nonprofits, and it's not just the Black Lives Matter. You also got other um, organizations will be taking clothes and stuff and donations and stuff and, 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 and you send money to Miss, Miss Cross and then she gonna send the money back but then what what if we give y'all a hundred million dollars a year and then you only spending five million dollars to, to take care of folks to help folks out what the hell did you do with the other 95 million dollars so like who what a way that we need to see this receipts and sometimes they folks since they're a nonprofit they don't have to disclose this stuff so these folks don't have to disclose where this money is going because, you know, they'll say it's a trade secret or something like that. I have no problems with folks questioning these things. And I don't think the massage noir is a big problem, like a big um, thing of why Patrice is getting critiqued. I don't think that is right. I think that it's dangerous to try to make that assertion. And that's just not it. Like, it's just not it at all. So, girl, I'm going to move on and talk about some other stuff. But, you know, I, I don't think Patrice is an evil person. I don't think she's bad. I just think that, you know, money corrupts a lot of folks. Money corrupts all. Like, that's just what it does. It's greedy. And, like, it's just it's a mess. So, moving on and talking about other stuff related to this. I'm talking about Kim Potter. Um, she, since has been ch charged with manslaughter. Didn't expect it. Really doesn't really tell us anything, to be honest, because we can see them being charged. And then they'll get off. Like, there's talks right now that, that, that there's a couple things that can happen with the Derek Chauvin uh, trial. It can be a mistrial. There can be a one jury say, well, girl, you know, I, I don't know if we can convict, convict. I don't know if we can do. There's so much stuff that can happen, even with all of this evidence, all of this stuff that we're seeing about how this man passed away. They're trying to blame it on drugs. They're trying to blame it on the, the carbon monoxide coming from the car. They're trying to blame all of these things. Instead of the major thing of this man standing on this police officer standing on this man's neck for almost 10 minutes. No ma'am. No ma'am. 
So now you got Kamala Harris and you got Joe Biden saying dumb shit. You got all these folks saying things and, oh, we need more training, more training. We need this and that. I'm going to say the same thing that I said yeah, last, the, the, this past Tuesday. There is not enough training. There's enough, not enough body cameras. There's not enough anything. It will continue to happen. It will continue to happen. And I will say this to anybody that is a police officer. Girl, you might want to rethink your job right now because I don't want to ever be in a situation where I made a mistake and takes, took someone's life. I don't like for you to be like seeing that video at home, girl, talking about some taser. Girl, what? I'm not understand. Make it make sense for me. Why are we approaching folks who are dry, who taser out with this much force to begin with? Like, why? And then you see situations like uh, with, what's his name? Uh, let, me, let me pull him up, girls. I'm going to make sure. Jonathan P Pentlin, the, the white um, sergeant in South Carolina who was harassing that black man who was walking up and down the street and stuff. That aggression and that pent up rage and these folks wanting to be, and let me stand up because I got pissed off. Wanting to be in power. Wanting to, it, it's not about protecting service about having power over people they enjoy it that man is in the army and a black man walking up and down here he had him so enraged so pissed that he took it upon himself and said you're gonna get out of our neighborhood but i tell you i have been around white cis hetero soldiers like that white male soldiers like that i have been around them and they act just like that just like that and what's so funny there are some black male soldiers who act just like that too i was in the unit with them and some of them police officers right now in memphis and they just as trash and just as anti-black and these are folks walking around with force on their hands and on their hips that can take someone's life for having a suspended license for having an expired tag or having a brake light out Abolish the police. That's it. That's it. That's 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 the only solution. And I don't understand how we keep trying to fix something. Imagine you there's imagine eating something that is deadly and you keep trying to change it. You keep trying like that's insanity. That is insanity. Keep trying to change it and trying to update it. No ma'am. It's just not possible. It's just not possible. I know folks are like, oh abolish the police, we're gonna do my god. Boss, please, boss, please. If you look at how many times the police have caused death versus preventing some, I guarantee you'll be ready to abolish the police too. But moving on, we're gonna talk about some other stuff, girl, because I know I'm going in. I'm feeling my beat. I'm feeling my face. Get into it. Period. Period. So let's talk about. Let's calm down. Bring it back downtown. Let's talk about Lil Nas X. What is going on? I am confused as everybody about what is going on with Lil Nas X. I thought Lil Nas X was trolling. I think that's one of the things like Lil Nas X is known for trolling online. So when he said he was not joking, he said that his songs were being taken, his song uh, Montero, Call Me By Your Name was being taken off of streaming platforms. Um, I thought he, I was like, you know, this must be serious because when I tried to play it, it did not play. It played on my phone, but it did not play on my TV. But on my phone, I have it downloaded. On my TV, I don't have it downloaded, it's streamed. So I was just like, what's going on? Like. It's not playing, and I'm seeing screenshots of you know other folks who are having the same issue. Some people say they can access it. Some other folks said they can't. So it's a lot. I know we don't know. And Columbia Records has came out and said that there there is, is an issue that is going on, and they're they're handling it. But nobody is telling us what it is. Now, Billboard had ran with an article, and I read a little bit. Of, I read it, and it was basically like Billboard saying like, you know, it kind of sounded as though Billboard was saying that. Lil Nas X and then Mike, his what's name, might be taking it off. Like they might be taking it, and some folks speculate that it might be some type of thing where he trolled to get numbers. But I honestly don't think so. I I, I think it's something serious that's going on. I hope it's not a trolling thing. I'd be very disappointed if it was a trolling thing. Um, but we need to know what's going on. Like is it is something wasn't clear or something like that. Like what is going on? And I feel like nobody's giving us no answer, but people are telling it's happening. So give us an answer. What is going on? So it's real, it's, it's looking kind of skeptical um, because it looked like the industry is playing. And I'm not saying that they are her pretending like something happened. It just looks like the industry is somebody like big us like, no, we're going to have to get this song off of her because it's doing way too much. It's doing way too much like as far as like the publicity with the satanic shit and all the other stuff. I don't know what's going on. I, I, I don't know. I have some thoughts, but I'm, I'm going to keep it to myself because I already got enough trouble next, this week anyway. 
Um, let's talk about something else. I watched a video, um, a little bit of the, um, I watched some of the Red Table Talk and Barbara Brown read about it. Barbara Brown was on Red Table Talk and with my friend Darian had a little conversation about it. Um, and um, I don't know how to feel about Barbara Brown going and have a conversation about Whitney Houston after her passing um, and trying to like kind of clean his image up and clean his stuff on the back of this woman's death. Like this, this woman cannot defend herself. She cannot say anything. And Barbara Brown is out here having a conversation. I just want Barbara Brown to just be quiet. I want him to be quiet, think, seek therapy, all of those things, and just be quiet. Like, I just, I don't feel comfortable, and I, like, seeing Jada respond, it was just like, so you think that uh, Nick was responsible for, uh, what's the name's death? You think, it's just like, it's giving very much clickbait. It's giving, why we having this conversation? Like, y'all have been milking Whitney Houston's passing for the longest. Like, for, and I want to have a conversation about the consumption of celebrity, especially in response to how DMX was being talked about. I'm going to talk about that on Patreon because I know it's going to be a very sensitive subject, but people have asked me to talk about that. So I will be engaging in that conversation. Um, I just, I don't know, but I, I don't know. I just, I don't want to hear anything else from Bobby Brown. I'm going to go back on the soldier, um, Jonathan Pentland uh, from South Carolina, who was out here harassing that black man who was walking up and down the street. I don't know if you've seen the video, but you had this man. I was literally, he's in the army uh, and is an active duty, like non commissioned officer. But he's a sergeant, I think, what we say, a staff sergeant. And he was out here harassing and shoving this black man for walking down the street. And then he had this wife, you hear him in the background. You need to leave. So the community stood up, and baby, the next day, I think some later on when it came out, baby, they had, it like, seemed like every black person in South Carolina pulled up right in front of this man's house and told him to come outside. Baby, I am hollering. That is showing up the community. That is showing up the community like, how dare you be talking to this black man? You don't have no authority, but them folks, they, they are so power driven that I, I'm telling y'all, I have been around the folks and they're so power driven that they think that they have every right to say and act and engage with folks like that because they think, oh, well, I'm a hero, I'm a soldier, I'm out here doing it for the West Main. And they're all, all that stuff is bolstered by white supremacy. So it's just like, you're doing the right thing, but it's really just you being a white supremacist and a colonizer. So that's that. Um, what else is it I want to talk about? I think I covered everything that I wanted to talk about in this video, bro. Um, I'm pretty sure there's some other things that are going on. I will be talking about that probably later on next week. Uh, but we do um, have some content coming out on Miss Patreon this week. So um, y'all might not see me on YouTube until probably Monday, depending on what's going on. But um, I want to encourage everybody to go get your vaccine. I got mine. I got the second shot of the Pfizer. Um, my arm was a little short, like uh, a little sore. My arm was a little sore, but that's about it. I haven't had any like like side effects. The only thing is when I got back, just in case I took some Tylenol, just in case. But I woke up this morning feeling really good. Um, and um, I just, I think people need to take it serious because I'm hearing a couple of stories um, all out, like from folks on social media and folks everywhere, you know, where people who do not want to take the vaccine, they're, they're scared of the vaccine and this and that. And then they put everybody else, you know, life at risk. Uh, you know, and, and put res on unfortunate responsibility on loved ones, and it's just like y'all, please take this stuff very seriously. This, this virus is very se serious. We are still seeing 67,000 people uh, contract the virus um, right now. So we are we're still in the middle of this, and we need to do whatever we need to do to protect our folks and our loved ones. And that's that. I love y'all so much. And until next time, I'll talk y'all later on tonight. Bye.